Bistect Health and Wellness Show, where we focus on bringing you knowledge on health and wellness to help ensure a more productive and healthy lifestyle for yourself, your families, and your employees. Now, I'm Brian Fernandez. Today, we focus on age proofing your knees and how we can take better care of our knees in order to have a better quality of life as we age. Now, to bring expert insights, we have a specialist from Sunway Medical Center, Dr. Chua Hua Sen, consultant orthopedic surgeon. Dr. Chua, welcome to the show. Hi, thank you, Ryan. Thank you. Now, Dr. Chua, before we start, could you kind of give us an overview of your area of specialization, orthopedics? Okay, so um, like uh, I'm an orthopedic surgeon. Now, orthopedic surgeon is a surgeon that deals with bones and joints. And I sub-specialize into adult hip and knee joints, okay? So essentially, uh, what I do is I do all the reconstruction of the knee joint as well as hip joint, including the ligament reconstruction for the young patient, mm -hmm. uh, as well as those knee and hip replacement for the elderly. Uh, I do revision cases as well. And so I'm also a, a bit... Uh, interest into minimal invasive uh, surgery. So we do scopes work, we do robotic arthroplasty work. That's what I do. Okay, and we're going to touch a little bit more about that later as we go through the, the, the show. But can we start, Doctor, by, by talking about the knee, which is one of the most vulnerable parts of our body. And could you share with us what's typically uh, involved in knee health and does age really matter? Or is it more of a lifestyle thing? So, so knee joint essentially is the biggest joint in our, in our body. And it is a very, very complex joint. Even though you would think that knee joint is just like a hinge joint, but it's, it actually moves more than just a hinge. There are movement of flexion extension. There are also rotation in the knee joint. And within the knee, there are cartilage, there are ligaments, there are a couple of meniscus, there are also muscle and tendon around it. So for, for, for a knee, for all of us, the, the peak of our knee health will be the adulthood when we just achieve adulthood. That will mean that as we are growing, we grow towards the adulthood. And by the time we are 25 years old or so, that's the time when the knee has got the peak of the health. And at that point of time, many of us would think that we are invincible. We do a lot of things. We'll be running, jumping and, and everything without knowing that we potentially actually injuring our knee. Now the knee joint is also a weight bearing joint. So age as well as the lifestyle actually contribute towards the knee, uh, knee joint health. Um, as we grow older and older, of course, the, the knee age together uh, the longer we use the knee, the more wear and tear that we, we introduce to the knee. The knee health will follow by the age will deteriorate. And of course, lifestyle as well. If you compare two person, one person who is probably an ideal body weight as compared to someone who is a little bit overweight because of the lifestyle, lifestyle because of the eating, then, then the knee in the person which is of the ideal weight will probably be healthy for a longer period of time. When it comes to knee injuries, it, it can range, you know, it's quite a wide spectrum. It can be random cracking sounds when bending or crippling pain, you know, but at what point should we consult a medical professional? Now, are there any symptoms or red flags that we should look out for that, that basically calls us to action? So, so I, I always classify the, the so-called symptoms of the knee into these four main symptoms. Yeah? Number one is pain. Now pain essentially is our defense mechanism. When you have a pain in one particular region of your body, and today we're talking about knee, let's say if you have a severe pain in the knee, out of proportion, not, not helped by just normal painkiller, that is number one symptom that you should wear off, that you should number one, think about going to seek uh, treatment. Pain number one. Second, it's swelling. 
sometimes because of certain injury or non-injury, the knee swollen up. It becomes very, very big as compared to the other side. Because of the swelling, comes with tightness and stiffness, as well as sometimes that aching feeling as well. So swelling is the second group of symptoms in which I think if you have it in your knee, that you should consult an orthopedic surgeon. The third group of symptom is instability. What do I mean by instability? It's like whatever action or activity that you do, you realize that you don't trust your knees so much. The knee seems to be wobbling. You see, so so you can't bear weight anymore, is that right? So when you bear weight, in certain movement, you feel like the, the knee just give way or wobble away. That is when I feel uh, that you should also seek treatment. And last but not least, it is when your knee slowly, slowly getting more and more deformed, deformity. I'm sure you have I've seen before many, many old people, sometimes their, their knee is bent so much that it becomes like an O shape or yes. an X shape. So this, when the deformity comes in, it also tells that it is in an advanced stage of the disease of particular knee injury. Okay, Dr. Cho, I want to zoom in on what you just mentioned because I think most people uh, who are perhaps not so sporty probably experience their first instances of knee issues as they grow older, probably in their 50s or so. Um, what are the, the, the key central problems that contribute to this? Because you mentioned it's, it's inevitable, but why only at that sort of age do, do people really start to, to experience this? So, so it's, it's essentially it's age related, it's wear and tear related. So as we grow older and older and older, number one, our, our, the cartilage thickness that has been there since we were young is being worn away slowly. And when you reach 50, 60 years old, that's the time when the cartilage is thin now. And when they are thin, they do not dissipate the load so well. And then that's when you start starting to feel the pain and aching. That's number one. Secondly, the tissue around the knee, such as the meniscus and, and, and the capsule and everything, can become hardened as we age. So when it's hardened, it doesn't, it's not so flexible anymore. A little bit amount of movement here and there may potentially cause small, small little micro injury into it. And that contributes towards aging and degeneration as well. Uh, last but not least, as we age, the muscle power become lesser and lesser because of sarcopenia, because of losing of muscle. Then the, the muscle help that to hold on to your knee to a more stable situation is no longer there. That's when you feel that your knee is giving you more and more problems. Now, um, I want to zoom in a little bit on uh, knee issues related to sports because I'm sure you're seeing younger and younger patients. So I myself am an endurance cyclist. I've experienced uh, issues with my left knee and I'm sure many of our audience who are active in the sports have various sort of uh, related problems as well. What are the most common sport related knee injuries? Okay, so like I said just now, in the knee is a very complex structure. There are four main group of things that can easily injure during sport injury. Number one, the ligaments. Okay, in the knee, there are four main ligaments. Two at the side, the medial collateral ligament and lateral collateral ligament. And two inside that's forming like an X. It's called the cruciate ligaments. So these four ligaments can get injured depending on how is the mechanism of injury. The ligament can be torn. And once it's torn, you get an instability inside your knee. It's number one. Group number two are the tendons. What are tendons? Tendons essentially are the structure that is connecting your muscle to the bone. That's where our knee movement is. So sometimes in certain injury, you may get a tendon tear or a tendinitis. That's where you get a very painful side of the, the tendon that's attaching to the bone. Thirdly, is the meniscus injury. Meniscus is like two pieces of like a cushion kind of thing within the knee that take the load all the time. And these two meniscus can be torn as well. If they are torn, then you will have pain. 
you sometimes they have locking sensation. What is locking sensation? Locking means sometimes in certain movement or any suddenly you realize that your knee just jam up and cannot yes. be turned and cannot be bent at all. That's when we call it locking. That's normally associated with meniscus injury. Last but not least is cartilage tear. Cartilage is the soft bone that is covering our knee surface. And cartilage can be torn as well. When you have a tear cartilage, you get swelling, you get bleeding inside the knee joint, and then subsequently you have chronic pain. When are the cases where we actually need surgery for these sort of injuries? Let's zoom in one by one in terms of ligament injury. Just now I said there are four ligaments. Mm -hmm. Collateral ligament from the side, majority of them, if you were to be diagnosed early, go through a proper treatment of non-operative treatment. That means we immobilize the knee properly, go through a physiotherapy. These type of ligament, majority of the time, do not need surgery. Now, it is the anterior cruciate ligament that we have seen many, many athletes out there that has torn it before, especially those footballers. Those of you who remember the Ronaldo, the ball Ronaldo, the yes. very Ronaldo, he has torn the ACL three times in the same knee. That particular time when he fell down in the middle of the field in the final, that's when he tore the third time of the ACL. Now, ACL, unfortunately, is an intra-articular uh, ligament. It doesn't heal whatsoever. When you have an ACL tear, majority of the time, if you were to want to get back to your active lifestyle, you will need surgery for that. You need this as well. If it is a bucket handle, it will come out and start to give you that locking that I told you just now, cannot straighten, cannot bend. That's when you need surgery. But of course, all this very, very complex. The best thing to do, if you have that four symptoms that I told you, mm -hmm. up, look for a topic surgeon, we'll assess, we'll give you the options of whether you can go without the surgery or go with the surgery. One of the things is, if we go without surgery, um, physiotherapy is sometimes a very good option. So I, I'll share with you my, my previous experience. So I had... Uh, an injury when I was uh, cycling in France and I came back, uh, but because I had been, uh, it, it was a long event, it was a 90 hour event. Uh, the, the injury happened in the 10th or 12th hour and I kept cycling and my knee kind of exp you know, expanded, let's put it that way. So you, you can just imagine what happened uh, uh, with the stress on it for that time. When I came back to Malaysia, I got it attended to and fortunately, I didn't need surgery. So I didn't damage it enough that I need surgery, but I needed a long physiotherapy. Now, the, the, they put me through an exercise conditioning program, which basically they said uh, it is to strengthen, to help strengthen the muscles can, uh, for flexibility. And also it was very targeted at certain muscles. Uh, Dr. Chua, could you kind of enlighten us on why they did those sort of things and, and, and how we could look after ourselves better post-injury? Post, uh, so, so essentially, after the injury uh, in the knee, majority of the time, just like you say, it's expanded, it's swelled up, it's swelled up like a ball. So the first thing that the physiotherapy do is to try to manage the swelling. So it's what we call swelling management. So they try their very best to by using some of the equipment that is to ultrasound interferential to try to reduce the swelling. That's number one. Yep. Once the swelling come down, when the pain is lesser, with the help of the painkiller, you realize that that will be probably take a couple of weeks time. By the time two weeks later, you realize that all your knee will be strung down, your muscle is lost, your muscle wasting, and the second phase of the physiotherapy normally is to gain back flexibility, like you say, to gain back the range of the knee joint. So they'll try their very best to get you to fully straighten the knee, as well as fully flex the knee or bend the knee. Okay, so this is the second phase. And after gaining the range of motion, sorry, the range of motion, last is for the muscle, is to build back the muscle, like you say, target targeted certain muscle, group here and there, 
The reason why we target the muscle group, certain group here and there, is to show that it can also help to align the knee back to the position where we want it to be. Certain group of muscle can pull the patella slightly more central, and so that the movement is better, it's lesser pain. So the muscle power eventually, when they come back, it will help to hold the knee more stable, and by then you will probably gain back your full function of the knee. Now, Doctor, I want to now uh, ask you more about. The, the impact on the elderly. So especially in your 50s and 60s, when all these problems really start to, 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 to manifest itself, for some people, there's no choice but hip replacement or knee replacement. Could you walk us through some of those options and um, what are the risks involved with the surgery? Okay. So, so it's essentially, we, we, we stage all the diseases, okay? So when we come to we talk about a replacement, it is essentially because of the knee is knee or hip, it's at the point of, of no return. It's beyond help anymore. The joint is so, so damaged that we have no choice but to replace the joint. So now a joint replacement, let's focus just purely on knee joint replacement. It's a procedure in which we, we take away the damaged uh, surface of the joint and replace it with the artificial one. And at the same time, we also realign it back. So stage four disease, very, very painful in aging people, and that is already deforming the knee joint. That's when we think about potentially replace the knee joint. Now, every single surgery, there's risk. And always we always weigh between the risks and the benefit before we embark onto any treatment, okay? So in an elderly, first of all, we always check them through and make sure that they, their body or their physiological age is young enough to withstand this kind of surgery. That's number one. Once we make sure that they are okay to go through all this surgery, then only we will embark onto this surgery. Now, any one time we cut open a skin, the number one enemy of all of us is infection. Now, infection happens Worldwide number is one to three percent in the primary total knee replacement, and uh, uh, we we take good care as well. You know, in terms of wound care, in terms of if you are diabetic, we make sure that your diabetic is well controlled, and all just to prevent this infection. This number one risk that we fear the most. Second risk that we fear is blood clots within the legs because of in immobility during the pain or during the recovery process. Uh, blood clots. Last but not least, sometimes the associated nerve or vessels injury, which are most likely preventable. Okay, so these are uh, in terms of the replacement. But uh, to me, I feel if you are not yet into the advanced treatment or advanced disease, we should not even think about the replacement just yet. There are many, many other things that we can do before that, to when you first started to have this kind of so-called osteoarthritis of the knee. Could, could you highlight some of those uh, options? Because obviously the, the, the radical, the, the full surgery option of replacement is the last thing that people want, especially the older persons, because there are also challenges with dealing with that, isn't it? Sure. So, so there are essentially many other options. So Okay. Options number one, obviously, is number one is activity modification. Let's say, for example, you are 55 years old, you're starting to feel a little bit on your knee pain and everything. And some people say, oh, I do not want to go through any more uh, proper treatment just yet. So what you can do is to modify your activity a little bit, such as number one, weight loss. That is also considered as activity modification. Because it's less uh, weight bearing on your knees, isn't it? That was the whole That's idea. Right. That's right. So if you were to cut the weight a little bit, lesser load onto the knee, you do feel a little bit better. That's number one. Secondly, certain activity you may want to think about avoiding it, such as squatting and kneeling. Squatting and kneeling are really very, very bad for the knee joint. I know nowadays many, many of us who likes to look good, you like to do some deep squats and everything just to build your quadricep muscle as well as your gluteus muscle so that you look good. But those are good for your muscles and not so good for your knee joint. Knees. Okay, so try to avoid all those things a little bit, uh, better, uh, a little bit if you can. 
Dr. Chua, running as well, isn't it? Because that's yeah. a high impact and that really uh, 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 basically impacts your knees. Yeah. That's right, that's right. So running, it's what we call an open chain exercise. That means you have a, a period of time in which you are completely airborne before you hit down your foot. And that's when the impact comes. So running, if you want to run, make sure you get a very, very good shoe. Make sure you run with a very good form. Make sure that if you can, uphill is not too bad, flat is okay, but downhill running is the one that is killing the knee. Okay. Just talking about what else can we do for to, to help in, in terms of food as well. In fact, some of the food does promote joint health. Things like yeah, it's glucosamine, really, which is which is the, the thing that everyone talks about all the time. The first thing they say you have a joint problem, they say, Oh, please go and take glucosamine. Does that really work? Okay. Now glucosamine essentially it works only in one particular form of glucosamine. If we were to look into all the literature, there's only one form of glucosamine that really, really help knee joint if you take 1.5 gram per day. Okay, That is crystalline glucosamine sulfate, not anything else. Now in the market, there are probably, I don't know, a thousand types of glucosamine. Yes. <laughs> Majority of them, unfortunately, the last thing I want to do is to spoil people's market is more of marketing. I see. So what are the, besides that, so what do we need to take in terms of natural food perhaps or any other additional supplements? So natural food, things like turmeric is actually good for joint. Things like soy based uh, food such as uh, soy, soy bean, the milk and soy milk and citrusy food, the one, the lemons, the, the oranges, these are all good for joints. Okay. So these are the things that are good for joints in terms of natural food. Dr. Chua, how about um, exercises? Because food is always one part of the equation. We also then need to strengthen and increase flexibility. What do we need to do? So for me, it's very, very simple. Try your very best to target two big group of muscles. Number one is the quadricep in front. Number two is the hamstring behind. If you can target these two group of muscle, get it strengthened, your knee will feel much, much better. Now, how do we then avoid injury? What is the, for example, so we're doing exercise and things like that. Um, the biggest danger, obviously, especially as you mentioned, if you're doing squats, is getting injured doing something like that. How do we what precaution should we take in order to prevent knee injury? So personally, I feel just number one, any exercises that we want to do, the form of the exercise is the important one. You must make sure that you do it correctly. If you don't do it correctly, that's where the injury can happen. Now, in order for us to do the certain exercise in the correct form, sometimes it's good that we do have a friend to look at us when we do certain exercises. Number one. Secondly, always, always listen to your body. Like I said earlier uh, of our conversation, the pain is the defense mechanism. If you were to do certain exercise at certain point of time or certain movement that you do, you have this pain. Just try your very best to avoid that particular movement. Okay. Uh, these are the two things that I feel that is important. Last but not least, do make sure that you already have the enough muscle power before you embark on it. Now, what are the easy tips perhaps, and this is really across the board and across ages, um, that we can ensure that we're taking good care of our, our knee health. Starting maybe from the 20s, what should we do to set the stage for good knee health? And then perhaps you can walk us through the years. Okay. so. Let's, let's think about us at the peak of our, our, our time where I say this now, 25 years old, we thought that we are invincible. Number yeah. one, we are not invincible. Try to tell yourself you are not invincible. You do have to be careful with whatever that you do. That's number one. Exercises that you want to do and everything, I think it is okay that we want to push ourselves, but always listen to your body. That's number two. Number three, Good form of exercises are important. Number four, weight control 
very, very important. Make sure that you don't overeat, huh? control your weight properly. Next, build your muscle properly first, build the flexibility, make sure that you are flexible, good muscle. Food, just now we talk about food, what are the food that we can eat and everything. Things that you should avoid, deep squatting, kneeling is bad for knee joint. If you were to be able to do certain exercises or anything, make sure that you get a good pair of shoes. Nowadays, many of us do some jumping exercises or anything at home as well. So make sure that you do have a nice soft surface to jump on, not the hard surface. Um, next is, if you were to have certain injury, seek help early. Now, many of us, small little injury, we thought, let's pop a couple of Panadol and let's see whether is it okay or not. I think it's okay to have that kind of strategy for two to three days. If three days later, the pain is still there, please go and seek help. Get it diagnosed properly because early, early treatment is always much better than a late treatment. So doc, if I, if I go and see an orthopedic surgeon, what should I be asking the orthopedic surgeon and what should I expect in terms of responses? So, so if you were to go and see an orthopedic surgeon, first of all, obviously you need to tell the orthopedic surgeon or the orthopedic surgeon should be able to listen to your history. History means that the mechanism of you getting injured. What is troubling you now? The pain, the instability, the swelling or is it anything else? That's number one. Secondly, majority of us would have then put you on a couch, examine your knee, check it, and have certain kind of provisional diagnosis as to what we are dealing with. Next, we'll probably send you for some scans, knee joints, x-ray, CT scans, and MRI scan. We'll send you for some scans. And by the time the scan come back, we would be able to tell you one diagnosis. That means what is wrong with your knee. That is something that you would want to know from the orthopedic surgeon that treat you. What is wrong with my knee? And then subsequently from there, you can always discuss about the options there. Whether is it non-operative one or the operative one. What, what's the benefit and the risk? Which one is better? And we try non-operative first. And we try physiotherapy first. So these are all the options that we can discuss. And last but not least, with every option can also discuss with us regarding the potential outcome of what you are dealing with. Um, and what you would expect to get at the end of the treatment. So the expectation, of, of, we, we need to manage the expectation in the correct fashion. Let's say, for example, a knee injury in Ronaldo, he needs to get back to international world-class performance. That yes. is the different expectation. One expectation, if you come to, let's say, uh, a patient of mine earlier on, he said, no, I just want to be able to walk properly. I can walk my dog. I can, you know, uh, 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 make sure that I can walk with my kids and everything. That is a different kind of expectation. With that kind of expectation, we do probably will not be needing to go so active in treating it as compared to the Ronaldo. And also recovery then, Doc, um, basically uh, varies by age, by also physical fitness and also the, the level of muscle activation that's uh, between different uh, people, correct? That's right. That's right. So in, in terms of recovery, it, obviously, like you said just now, when you're younger, you recover better, you, you, you have the power of regeneration and you have more muscle power, you can recover better. So, so but in any knee injury per se, we, we are talking about a minor injury. We are talking about easily about six weeks of recovery period. A slightly more severe one, three months to six months. The really, really severe one, up to one year. Just to wow, recover. one year. Yeah. Now, Dr. Troy, it's been a fascinating conversation. Any final words to leave us with? Okay, final words is, I, I, I think all of us, like I said, when you do get injury, seek the help early. Get it properly diagnosed. 
before you think that oh it's nothing i can just leave it alone that's what i think and uh healthy joy healthy life now dr chua thank you very much for taking your time to be on the show you're welcome you're welcome anytime i'm brian fernandez and we've been speaking to dr chua kwa sen consultant orthopedic surgeon at sunway medical center on biztex health and wellness show this video will be on our Facebook and LinkedIn sites, as well as our website, www.biztech.asia. Please subscribe or like our various platforms. Thank you very much for tuning in.